Okay, Oval fans, this will be my review for last night's episode, The Hornet's Nest, episode 16 of season 3. And if I'm not mistaken, well, we only have 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We got about five or six episodes left of the season. I thought this episode was okay. I thought it was fine. Um, one of those, yeah, I'm not mad that I slept through it. Honestly, I think because yesterday I had so much work to do and I have a lot of work to do again today. Uh, IMDB is just spilling all the tea. It's like the Boston Tea Party on IMDB because the entire um, body of water is covered in episode titles and synopsis. Ruthless, House of Pain, Assisted Living, Sisters, um, Bruh. For some reason, every single episode, title, and synopsis, almost every single one of them has been released. So, after I record this, then I got to do the other videos. So, yesterday I recorded a crap ton of stuff, especially Ruthless, who they just dropped the trailer out of nowhere. And I rushed to get all that stuff ready. So, by the time I was out by like 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, I just passed out, woke up at 6 this morning. I was like, damn, I must have been tired. So, here we are, another day, but better to be busy than to not have any work at all gotta make this money right okay so um i give last night's episode seven out of ten i thought it was pretty good but yeah and this isn't anything against the female characters because like kareem male characters make dumb mistakes anyway uh, dumb mistakes too but why were the women just written to make one terrible decision after another the ones that stand out without even looking at my notes because i literally i literally just finished the episode lily Priscilla, Simone, and at the very end of the episode, Sharon. They were all about to make dumb decisions. And of course, I'm like, well, we are getting closer to the end of the season, so perhaps this is to build hype as well as continue the story. But for them to make just stupid decisions, I don't know. But let, let's just jump into it. Now, I will admit, I did really like the first scene of the episode between Hunter and Kareem where... You know, I don't know, Hunter was like a mob boss, you know, drug lord, the godfather, you know, messing with his ring on his finger. You know, I really don't like when people treat me like a punk, Kareem. Yeah, you don't know what it's like to be president, huh? I, while it was a good scene, it, this is just, I don't know, maybe it's my fault. I just can't stop comparing moments like this to like, let's say, have and have nots, like when Jim had Candace take him on the Malones or, you know, where he's like uh, roughing up uh, Broderick at the hotel for messing around with Catherine. I think because we've seen it done so many times before, I can't help but compare it to other Tyler Perry scenes. However, this was still a good scene. And I'm just sitting here the entire time like, well, I'm not going to say I wouldn't be pulling a Kareem in that situation, but it's like after all the shit he's talked all the people he's like been disrespectful to, mainly uh Barry's parents, to actually see him like, no, I don't know nothing. But I, it's like, yo, at this point, I think it's pretty damn clear the president knows everything. Not to mention, wait, you have eyes and ears everywhere. You live in D.C. and he's the fucking president. Of course he does. Damn. I mean, you went to the police after your girlfriend and stay-at-home employee told you, hey, this is what the people in the White House did to us. No, I'm going to go to the police. Dude from the White House comes in there. Bro, I think it's far beyond the point of you being able to act like you don't know anything. And, you know, Hunter calls him out for it. And basically, we don't know what he has planned for Kareem. Keep in mind, I have only watched the end credit promo. I have not seen the full trailer for next week. So I don't know what the hell the plan with Kareem is. But... Uh, he's begging, I got a daughter. Come on, please, man. Please, please. So then Hunter gets out of the van, and he's talking with Grip, and he learns that apparently Grip can move him around from point A to point B undetected, which honestly explains the synopsis because I know the synopsis says something along the lines of Hunter plans to demonstrate his power to Kareem after finding out he can move around undetected undetected now at first i thought that had to do with kareem but no now it's like oh hunter is able to move around without anybody knowing thanks to grip okay because we know that's going to come in handy at the end of the episode okay so nancy's making breakfast and those biscuits look hella good 
and Sam wakes up and it's a really nice it's a really nice scene between the two you know them being the ones who stepped out of their marriage for this reason or that reason and like she says look I'm not trying to say to make you feel bad but just so you know Priscilla has a good heart and everything and a good heart can't hold anger and I'm th I was wishing Sam would say well you don't know Priscilla she I know her heart can't hold anger but um her hands can hold a pot of boiling water. <laughs> so uh, before he can skip out, he's like, okay, fine. You know what, Nancy? I will take a small biscuit. And Priscilla actually comes in and, you know, they kind of have a moment where he tries to greet her, but she doesn't want to see him or talk to him. And Nancy tries to make peace. And he's like, hey, you know what? I was just going anyway. And Priscilla actually came over there to talk to Nancy. But um, now that she saw... Sam, she really doesn't know what to do. This kind of gave me the same vibes as Sisters where, let's say, Karen came over to the basketball game saying she wanted to talk to Aaron, but then she saw Zach and then she froze up. It was kind of one of those things. Uh, but, you know, Nancy makes her stay so they can actually have a cup of coffee and just talk. Now, uh, Donald is over at the hospital and um, he's talking with Hunter in Jason's room, basically saying, hey, it might be a good idea for you and the first lady to go back to the White House to make a statement. And Hunter's like, uh, are you sure this has nothing to do with the young nurses or whatever? Like, no, sir. I mean, do you think I have a problem, Donald? No, it's like you love the ladies. E exactly. So basically, it's like Donald is, quote unquote, remembering what the president was making him, you know, aware of in the last episode. You know what? I'm getting tired of you telling me what I can and can't do. So I guess Donald's like, yeah, you know, everything's all good. Well, I want to go home and change and I'll meet you at the White House. All right. So we go over to the hotel. Uh, Max doing his thing on the computer over at the uh, table. You got Lily and Bobby with breakfast. Lily can't eat. She's just way too preoccupied with trying to get her life back and you know Bobby's reassuring her is like hey we're going to get everything together we're going to help you no 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 see I, I can't be relying on you or anybody else all the time to save me to be a damsel in distress I need to get my life back myself and I'm just thinking yeah she's about to do something really stupid so she asked to you know you know what here's what I want to do I want to file for divorce I want to serve him with papers I need to call a lawyer and Bobby's like, yeah, we, we can handle all that. Okay, great. And he has his untraceable phone. And she, you know, takes it. It's funny because before he gives her the phone, it's like, wait, that phone can't be traced, right? Because he's like, do you know the number to a lawyer? Yeah, no, um, wait, is that phone untraceable? Right. Yeah, I remember. I need some privacy. And as soon as she goes into the bathroom on the phone, Max strolls up to the table. You know, you argue like a married couple, right? Shut up, Max. Go back to your computer. Well, you know she's not calling um, a lawyer, right? She's going to call him. You sure it's untraceable, Bobby? Yeah, I know. I know what she's going to do. Maybe she's going to call a lawyer afterwards. I'm like, all right. So after that, she gets on the phone, calls Donald the moment that he comes out of the shower. And, you know, basically to let him know that, hey, you're going to be served and I'm going to kill you. And nobody else is going to be me. You might need to beef up security. And then he's like, oh, okay. Well, uh, I already did, baby. Hey, do you know where Kyle is? Yeah, I have him. And he's thirsty. Uh, basically, there are like several times in their conversation where the, you know, the nod to her waterboarding was mentioned. It was clever writing, but I was just like frustrated because I'm like, here we go again. First, you got Priscilla. Now you got Lily. Uh, you got these scorned women who are just making dumbass decisions. Be well, I'm not saying Lily isn't justified in getting revenge, uh, just like Priscilla isn't justified to be pissed off, but they're ruining operations that are very, very complicated with their own personal vendettas. And as a result, it's probably going to wind up in themselves or other people being killed. And it's just ridiculous. Um, so after that, Donald gets on the um, phone to call Alan, leave him a voicemail, basically to say, hey, call me back. So Victoria, who is looking hella good in that blue dress, is talking with Hunter because as soon as he gets home, you know, the first thing that or the White House, to, well, technically it's their home. So the moment he comes to their room, the first thing she asks, oh, wait, are the nurses gone? Wait, what do you mean I was there for my son? And then he's like, wait a minute, are you the one that had the young nurses removed? And she kind of alludes to the fact that, look. I have worked too hard for you to screw this up by doing something asinine. So, oh, like you removed Ellie? No, the bullet did that, honey. But basically, she brings up the fact that, look, you know what? We need to do something about this vice president situation. And then Hunter's like, you do something about it. And I'm like, Hunter, come have you learned nothing? But in any case, 
uh, she gets on the phone to call Simone and basically say, hey, you better come to the White House. There's something, um, you know, we need to talk about. No, I have nothing to talk to you about. But she kind of alludes to the fact that, you know, when we were vetting you and your husband to be the vice president and whatnot, maybe there was one or two things that we chose to turn the other way on, meaning that you come here at noon for lunch or else. And Eli comes downstairs when Simone gets off the phone and she's looking hella good too. And no, I do not. I cannot decide who I want more. E, um, um, Eli's wife or Hunter, Victoria's wife. Well, excuse me, Victoria or Simone. I don't know. They're both hella fine. It's the cheekbones. I don't know what it is. It's just the cheekbones. Just hella good. But yeah, Eli is like, wait, is something going on? And basically, Simone explains it's the first lady. And he's like, yeah, don't go over there. I mean, there's nothing that we have to hide. It's like, do you think that she would make up something? So I don't know. And at, before she got off the phone, it's like, I know you're going to come because you're a curious bitch. So Simone is seemingly playing into Victoria's hands because what's the next thing she says? You know what? I'm going to go. I think it's time for her to know who her opponent is. Eli, don't worry. It's the White House. She wouldn't try anything there. Um, what? Your husband got on stage and you were up there with him and basically you know, aired out the president's dirty laundry, the first family's dirty laundry. Then the first lady got up in there and confirmed that, yeah, her their son killed people in the White House. She literally had a knife in her hand waving it in the air at you the last time you had lunch together. So why are you assuming that going, is it because with all eyes on the White House now, it's like, oh yeah, she wouldn't try anything? That's one thing. If she had some justification, if, if she would have said those kind of things, that would have helped. But for Simone to just say, oh, it's the White House, honey. She's not going to try anything. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, that hurt. It, it really hurt to just sit through that because I'm like, are, are we really being serious here? Okay, so. Eli's going to take the kids to school, and she's going to go over to the uh, White House. Um, and weren't they supposed to, like, wasn't the vice president supposed to go to the house or whatever today, and then also get the people looking for Gail? Let's hopefully not forget about that. We go over to Kareem's apartment. Kareem still isn't there. They've blown up his phone. No answer. And they just agree that, you know what, the pharmacy isn't open. We ought to just go over there to open up and see what's going on. My biggest thing is, um, I'm going to assume this is not the only pharmacy in the area because if it is, there are a lot of people who are going to be in trouble. They can't get their medication. I'm thinking more about the older people in the community since they live in a, you know, kind of the, uh, the lower end part of the city. Well, let's just talk about where the pharmacy is located. Yeah, I, I figured that, you know, the people in the area definitely need the pharmacy to be open. And I mean, with all the shenanigans been going on the past day or so, you know, you got to get it together. Okay. Well, in any case, yeah, you know, Sharon's freaking out and they go over there. So again, continuity is good because Dale's still struggling to move around. Priscilla is sitting at, you know, the dining room table with Nancy, um, just kind of talking about things. The fact that um, the reason I can't just sit at home and do nothing is because when I'm at that house by myself, I'm just surrounded by all the memories and good times we had. And and then she's like, I got to go to work. And then Priscilla's, I mean, Nancy's like, wait, are you really going to work? It's like, yeah, because, well, if I'm really going to do things on my own, like basically, you know, Nancy's trying to vouch for Sam and also the fact that Priscilla just needs to cool off. But she's like, you know, no, I got to go to work because if I got to, if I'm going to start, you know, doing things myself, like basically hinting at divorce, if I'm going to be in like a single income home, I need to go to work to save money. So she's like, okay. So Priscilla gets up, well, is about to get ready to leave as Richard comes in and, um, you know, greets her and she's like, Hey, I'm going to work. And Richard's like, Oh, you, you, you're going to work. Yeah, I am. Okay. Okay. So as soon as she leaves, um, Richard talks to Nancy and Nancy's like, well, I tried, but ain't nothing I can do to stop her. Uh, you want to eat some breakfast? No, I gotta. I just had some coffee because you know I, I feel better about um, being at the White House behind Priscilla to make sure she doesn't pull anything. So after that, we go over to Alan's apartment. This was one of my favorite scenes of the episode, by by the way. So Donald comes in and wants Alan to get you know back on the job. Like, hey, I know you're going through a lot right now, but going to work will make it better. 
and Alan pretty much expresses how much he respects Donald almost like a father figure and like the reason he appreciates the job so much. No, it isn't the booze on my breath <laughs> like you think it is, Donald, but I want you to know that I'm not just an employee, but I'm someone that you know, you know, has your back. And if you want me to work closer to like the residency or the first family, just let me know. And I'm thinking to myself, bro, got that gun. So it's like, ah, yeah, you will. You definitely want to be in close proximity to the president and the first lady, huh? And the first son. But basically from there, he says, you know what? Hey, you're the first person I want to uh, tell this. But the reason I want to work closer is to learn everything I can from you and the president, because one day. I want to run for office. And Donald's like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, hey, you go ahead, get ready. And I'll see you at work. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, let's see how this goes. Now, Sam is over at Eli's house. And he's um, basically requested by Eli to monitor Simone because, hey, I didn't want to say this on the phone. But my wife is going to meet the first lady at the White House for lunch. Uh, we don't know why, but, you know, she's insisted she come. And also has the chief of staff said anything about me my wife or the kids and is it a situation where um anything shady's been going on at the white house ever since we made our announcement at the press conference but you know sam is asking all the right questions like sir how long are we going to keep kyle locked up honestly i don't know i don't even know how long we can but my name's on everything and if things hit the fan between, you know, Kyle, the chief of staff, the president and whatnot, I'll take the rap so you don't take any heat from it. And Sam's like, sir, do you think this is actually going to work? Honestly, I don't know. That doesn't sound encouraging, Eli. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot Sam done put on. I mean, it's bad enough he slept with the first lady, but he aligned himself with the vice president in the midst of everything going on. So things ain't looking too good. Where the hell is General Allen? Damn. I mean, General Martin. All right, so Alan actually arrives at work, and Alonzo says, uh, hey, man, I'm glad you came into work. Uh, hope you're doing well. And Alan thanks him for coming over the night before. And he's like, hey, Alan, yeah? Why didn't you tell me you came in here late last night? You sure you didn't sneak anything in? No. Are you sure? N yeah, man, stop. Well, hey, I'll just be, I'll be watching you. Don't worry about it. So it's like, does Alonzo know about the gun? Maybe. Who knows? But uh, we go over to Sam. Uh, who was getting a phone call from Max. The reason Max, he, yeah, he got like a box truck he has parked in some random location. He's like, yeah, I just want the delivery. Basically, he wants Sam to deliver Kyle to him, but it's just the same old, same old. But he makes it clear that the reason um he wants Kyle dealt with is the longer you have this, you know, irrational person locked away like this, the harder it's going to be to stop him when he's eventually let out. And when he goes to see Kyle in his cell... That's exactly what he says. Like, hey, the longer you keep me locked in here, the harder it's going to be for me to stop when I, you know, aim to ruin your life, starting with your wife. And apparently that's a hot button for Sam, you know, and Kyle points that out. But I did the video the day prior basically saying, hey, you know what? I, I, I don't think it's a good idea for Kyle to go after Priscilla because, well, I mean, you could also look at it from the perspective of if Kyle goes after Priscilla and Sam risk his life to save her. Maybe that's the reason they get back together. But then again, it's one of those situations where, well, Priscilla, unbeknownst to you, Sam is indirectly the reason that Kyle went for you anyway because he was acting on the orders of the vice president. So, and eh, potato, potato is on to get back together, right? But in any case, uh, he lets him know, like, Donald's going to be pissed off. It's been 18 hours since Donald called me. So, you know, he's going to be pissed off. I'm pissed off. He's not telling Sam anything. He's, you know joking around that kind of stuff but yeah all right so the final scene is at the pharmacy uh no kareem dale is trying to convince sharon to calm down they call no answer sharon says i'm gonna go to the police and dale's like uh no but she's like no 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 i'm not waiting another hour we've called like a million times we're going well no i'm going you don't have to go and you know Dale ain't going to stay there himself due to the fact that he can't really stand behind the counter because, again, PTSD from being shot there. And how is he going to run the pharmacy by himself? I mean, I'm not saying that he couldn't, but the fact that he could barely move around, so I guess the pharmacy wasn't going to open that day? Whatever. So the back door opens right as Sharon is about to leave. They think it's Kareem, but it's actually Hunter and Grip. And that's the episode in a nutshell. So, yeah, I think the biggest problem for me was the likes of Simone, Sharon, Lily and Priscilla just making dumb decisions and you know Priscilla 
for me, the dumb decision is the fact that you put yourself in situations that trigger you. I'm not saying it's her fault entirely that she got cheated on and whatnot, but how can you say that you can't stay at home because it's full of all the memories you and Sam had, yet you go to work and that's where your husband is, that's where the woman that he banged is, and I don't know, it's just weird. It's like, just, I don't think one or two days would quote-unquote kill you, and it's like, you kill your bank account just to get yourself together. There's a lot... It's kind of like Karen on Sisters. You know, there's a lot of stuff she went through in the earlier seasons that I don't feel Karen ever just took the time to slow down and, you know, get the help she needs. I'm not calling her fully crazy, but she's been through a lot. And I don't feel there's ever been a moment just for her to just sit back and address these issues before moving on. And then when it comes to Priscilla, it's like you literally... There's a difference between, well, honestly, Priscilla and Alan are almost in a similar situation, you know, where Alan is staying in the apartment where his girlfriend got killed right in front of him. And then he's at work surrounded by the people that, you know, he feels are responsible, not to mention that's the place where he caught his girlfriend banging the president. So there's a lot of stuff going on right now. But regardless, I did enjoy this episode. I really did. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, do you agree with you know my thoughts on like Lily and the, well, mainly the female characters doing dumb stuff? And no, the male characters aren't exempt like Hunter trying to mess around with Sharon still. Um, I really love the first scene between Hunter and uh, Kareem. That was some good stuff. It makes you wonder what exactly he's going to do with Kareem. But uh, yeah, let's talk about it more in the comment section below. And as always, take a moment to hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. In order to be notified whenever I post content on the channel, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon and select all. In case notifications are not coming through and you've been subscribed for a while, you may need to unsubscribe, hit subscribe again, hit the bell and hit all and it should work. But Thanks so much for tuning in. If you want to donate, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App, and I'll catch you in the next one.